Yeah, so these are my two cards that I've picked for uh, reflection of the last week. So one is actually, I'm going to start with the white one, which is Overwhelmed. So it's been a big week and I've, I'm now nearly three years into my business. I'm selling my house and moving to the shore. I've got some new clients, I've got some old clients and I'm um, doing a, a lot of stuff and um, it's just been a little overwhelming. So um, I've needed to really reflect and just pause. So that's sort of been my overwhelming. My second one is grateful because holy cow, uh, you know, I am three years into my business and I've got some amazing clients and I'm selling my house. So I'm really grateful for where I am. So even though I feel overwhelmed about it, I'm truly grateful for you know, how I'm feeling about it as well. I am the director of Talent Leadership Consultants, so TLC. Everyone needs some TLC. That's my byline. Um, and you, if you call and leave a message, you'll hear that. Um, I left the warehouse group three years ago, uh, dislocated my kneecap. Um, and was on ACC for six months and then just decided that that's uh, the break I needed to be able to go on my own. So uh, I've been in, in learning and development for about 25 years. So I decided to become an elephant rider six months into running TLC. I have a suite of accreditations and certifications and the language that I like to use around TLC is being authentic and um, connecting and um, really just sort of setting a quick connection and I didn't have the tools and somebody had talked about it I can't remember how or where or why um, but I rang Jeremy and said can I um, I just missed the Auckland one I rang him and I said can I come to the Wellington one and he said it's fully booked but of course you can so I took the next day I flew down to Wellington and um, did the course so I have color codes on my schedule uh, so I use digital but I also use old school diary um, and I colour code it and I break it up usually into sort of hour, two hour spurts and I make sure that it's a mixture of um, creating competencies or creating content or facilitating or um, coaching so I really spread myself over the week so that I don't get um, overwhelmed by just the heavy stuff. So yeah, I'm, I always, I've always i got a dog, a Shih Tzu called Rocky Balba, and so he also breaks up my day as well. So I'm probably most productive in the morning and at night and then on the weekends. I have a really high energy output, um, but I do know when my energy is low that I need to close things down and go for a walk. So it really does depend on the workflow and, and my energy levels. But the great thing about working for yourself is you can do it when that works, so you're, you're not um, rigid around nine to five. How do I stay focused? So, great question. <laughs> Um, and I like to just, like when I'm getting the variety of work that I do, I make sure it isn't the heavy stuff, it is a mixture. So um, I do coach, I do personality profiling, I do leadership, I do uh, content creation. So I do make sure that I am refocusing. If I do have something and, I'm, and I'm maybe on my third proposal of the day, I'll move it to the next morning and flex around it. So I'm really agile around my scheduling as well. I guess my favourite places to work are at home. I love working at home. I'm about to move to the beach, uh, which is going to be amazing. But if I do need to pick me up, I'll go to the local cafe or I'll call up a friend or, or I'll um, go to Next Gen, which has the ability to be able to do that. So I'm really flexible. The great thing about my role is um, half of it, if I'm not facilitating, is on the keyboard, so being able to do it anywhere. When I relax, I'm an active relaxer. So uh, I'll go to a concert, we'll go out for lunch, we'll, I drink a lot of wine, <laughs> I play a lot of sport, I coach. Um, I'm learning sit out at the moment, so I'm a real, real, real active relaxer. So I actually probably don't know how to relax. Well, that is my way of relaxing. So my favourite technology is everything. I am consumer of anything that makes the learning environment exciting. So I'll use Kahoot's, I'll use apps, I'll use the phone, I'll um, get people to open up um, card, the cards, a decks of cards, I'll, anything that allows the mixture of learning to be involved. So nothing is off limits. If somebody shows me something amazing, I'll, I'll embed it in my learning or the experience around it. So yeah. I'm an embracer of technology. I, I'm an early adopter. The other tools and games I use in my work are Cahoots. I love the, um, the, 
the, um, the test you know, embedded. I use lots of cards. Um, I actually follow a lot of the stuff that uh, elephant riders promote around the deck. So I've bought the um, sign language cards. I've bought the brand um, making cards. I've obviously got the ECB cards. I, um, I love to have um, posters and canvases and um, anything really. I have music. Um, I have uh, balls and bells and yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a high energy because you're trying to keep everyone above the line during the session. What I saw on the ECD was the ability to connect really quickly with people that I didn't really know and so that really helped me when I was creating the experience and I needed to land really quickly and whether I was dealing with frontline, middle management or exec, that I really needed a tool to be able to pull everyone together and make them feel safe, but also know that we were gonna go quite deep quite quickly. So that's what attracted me. In my opinion, <laughs> the most powerful part is the conversations that we have very, very quickly, and that people don't realize there's over 600 emotions. They could probably name a maximum of 10, and being able to use the ECD, it may, you could see the the aha moments come out and being able to actually pick something and then be able to converse and say it in a way that they're not really emotional. There's no tears, so it's, I think that's what is the power of it, yeah. The most rewarding thing about using the ECD is the simplicity, is the ability to be able to pull it out anywhere and, um, and is to just trigger that really vulnerable conversation really quickly. What I find rewarding is that I am able to use it. So I coach, I create content, I facilitate. Um, I do a lot of stuff around change, project management, uh, team building, and I can weave it in no matter where we're at. And it's a great check and tool, just at, you know, morning tea, lunch, afternoon tea, setting the, setting the context, ending the day. So I'll just sort of um, be able to weave it in without even uh, thinking about it. And I think that's the great thing. It just resets to check everyone is on board and how they're going. So I've worked with about 16 organisations and everything from at the Bank, Bank of China, I've used it, Airworks, um, which is a helicopter company, uh, Fisher and Paykel. I've also used it with um, the council. I've used it with a lot of organisations, small, singular, um, yeah, a, 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 range, a, <laughs> terrible, a range of organisations, public, private, um, technology, um, SME, so yeah, it's been, it's, there's been no boundary. Finally, the most powerful, and I explained this to Jeremy, was when I did it with my dad. So my dad is going to turn 70 this year. And he's still, he's a civilian in the army, so he's done his life work in the army, then left and then came back. And he still wants to, um, he wants to be better at his job. And so I sat down with him at home and I pulled the deck out and I said, what is it that you actually want out of your job? You know, what, you know, pick the, the good thing, you know, the black cards and the white cards. And he pulled it out and he just, he'd never experienced that before, because obviously regimental, never been asked that daughter sitting down with the dad, 69 year old Māori man who's been brought up very staunch, you know, um, daughter father relationship, you know, sergeant major in the army, here I am <laughs> teaching him around, you know, how to be emotive, you know, use emotive emotions to then work out what he wants to do for the rest of his life, which I don't know how long that is, you know, it was a pretty powerful conversation, yeah. deepest breakthrough that I've achieved is I guess just being able to simplify emotions in a conversational manner that's just quite intentively authentic and um, be able to pull out the cards like the Bank of China I didn't even tell him I was doing it until um, I bought it out and he was very hes hesitant the head of HR and he said at the like I said at the end, the end of it he was just like that was really powerful so to, to, to be able to have the confidence to do it and bring it in and then for it to go so well, better than I thought it did, um, and then to land and then to have that conversation afterwards, um, yeah, I think that was pretty powerful. It just shows you how it can go across cultures as well as businesses, as well as, you know, hierarchical. Yeah. The advice I would give when becoming an elephant rider is just give it a go, bring your decks, 
carry them around with you, use them, intertwine them in as many things as you do, uh, as you can, um, and then read the stuff that is supported by um, ECD, so um, and Jeremy and the team, because there's some great snippets and things that you can use, canvases, handouts, um, uh, stories, so you know, really sort of get embedded because you think you can only use the deck for the check-ins, but there's so much more wider uh, uh, perspective, um, so much more wider opportunities to be able to use it. Yeah. I tell leaders that I'm going to start talking about emotions because I want to give them that <gasps> what, and then I go, it's actually a game, and I and um, what I want you to guys to do is give it a go. So you know, I, it's funny because I want to freak them out because they, then they realise when we get into it, it's not a freaking out process as such. It's actually, oh, that wasn't so hard and that just draws, seems to draw the conversation quite quickly. And then as I do it, then I say, you know, you can use it for that, you can use it for your change, you can use it for your project management, you can use it for your check-in, your reflection, your, how you want to be as a team. Like, and, and, I, and so then I've woven it so that they realise actually this is something that they can use in their everyday leadership stuff that they do. Usually um, I measure success on the guys asking me, how do I get these cards? <laughs> and you, you literally that's probably 100% of the time. My favourite card, so there's two. The first one is Curious. And because I am like that, I'm a, you know, I just suck in information. Um, and I think that's a great way to be. And then the second one is because I'm curious, I become braver. So the second word is brave. And I think that's, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm about to start my third year in my business. You know, I am talking about emotions, but I'm feeding it in. I'm talking to execs, and I'm talking to frontline, you know, and I'm talking to my family. And I'm, to, you know, so it's be, made me braver. So look, curious and brave. I became a pro writer a year after I'd done the front line, uh, the face-to-face -face session. And it was just because I, I knew that there was more to it, but I didn't really know what it was. And I wanted to use, it, uh, use the pack, the deck, um, and intertwine it in everything I did. So that's the reason why. The biggest change I've seen in myself is to talk about emotions. I always, it's, Funnily enough, you know, I might be doing project management or change or um, coaching or competency models um, and I'm able to weave it in to everything. So I've just done a session with Animates and um, around uh, their plan for the uh, future and I wanted to just check how they were feeling, you know, and then the second session was when we talked, discussed about how they were feeling, there was some big, big points that were about to happen and so I did an above the line below the line and so when we did get below the line I pulled them back above the line saying this is what we want to feel this is not how we this is how we don't want to feel so I was able to weave that in like that you know so just to be able to on the spot go let's do this let's change that we need to do that yeah Becoming a pro rider and operating my business has meant that I really am living the value of TLC. <laughs> um, because I believe that if we start to talk about emotions, people become connected. And the old TLC um, around connection, around feeling part of something, around authenticity, around um, being part of a tribe, I, I really believe it's, it, it allows that to weave quite quickly into it. Yeah. The advice I would give if you are considering to become a pro writer is use Jeremy, <laughs> use other resources, use the pro writers around you, and if you can't, watch the videos, you know, read the articles, um, and just give it a go. Just, just make sure that, um, that you're not afraid and you become curious and brave. <laughs>